G'day, my name is Mike and I'm on the first series of Alone Australia and I just got a message from someone on my phone telling me that Alone Season 2 is just being opened up for applications. So I'm just going to explain how to get selected for Alone. Now, what I say is only really applicable to me, but I did manage to get in. Now, not everyone can get in, obviously, because there's only room for 10 people, but there's definitely some mistakes that you can make that will lower your chances of getting in. So I'm gonna explain what they are. And also another little bit of information at the end, which is something to be very important if you do get in. So uh, it was, or oh, must have been a bit over a year ago that applications opened up and I applied and you know, basically there's this application process, but the day that applications opened up, I went straight in and recorded my video. And I actually went through the whole application process and submitted it on the same day, because rightly or wrongly, I just thought, man, this is gonna show that I'm motivated. Now, I don't know if that works or not, but subconsciously there was a reason to that. And that is that I didn't wanna think about it too much, which is why when I'm making this video, I just literally saw that um, little message on Instagram that Alone 2 was coming out and I've come straight out, I've turned the camera on and I've started talking about it straight away. And there's a really important reason for that because you, the best way to come across on a show like Alone where they want you to be genuine is not to pre-prepare. And that's a mistake that I make a lot in my own filming and it was never really pointed out to me until I did Alone and the really experienced directors of photography and some great producers and experienced people there, self-shooters as well, um, highlighted that to me that you don't want to present. Alone doesn't want presenters presenting the bush to people. They just want people who can be themselves on camera. So um, that's why just jumping on and getting straight into your application video, as I did, I think was a good method. So. I literally just grabbed a mobile phone, like I'm filming this on now, and I walked outside, and without thinking about it too much, I just spoke to the camera. Now, it wasn't a brilliant performance at all, but it was kind of who I am, and that's kind of it. And it just went for two minutes, and I just, I didn't go and shoot retake after retake, I just kind of went in there and just did it in one go. And if you know that you're only gonna take one take at it, that's okay, like you can make plenty of mistakes. Like already in this video, there's lots of little things that you could cut out and go, well, that didn't look professional, you know, but I'm not being a presenter, I'm being myself. And we are conditioned to not be ourselves when we're public speaking or when we're in a conversation. A lot of the time, we're planning things and presenting. So uh, that's why I've shot this uh, on a phone and it's also why I haven't gone with a lot of effort to find a great background. Uh, I will actually show you my um, application video. Like I said, it's not great. Um, the light's not great. Um, I didn't dress up or anything like that. Now there's nothing wrong with having great light, but what they're trying to assess is who you are. And if you spend a lot of time, you know, waiting for the perfect light, using great equipment, all that kind of stuff, you are less likely to just focus on the message that you're trying to give across to the people who are selecting you, and they are the producers of the show. Now, they haven't asked me to do this video. I'm just doing it because I remember seeing some videos when, you know, when I was applying for a lane, I Googled it as well and found some, some YouTube videos, and, and I found them useful as well. And I'm, in some ways, I'm kind of repeating what they're saying, and I'm kind of confirming, um, confirming it from my experience having been on a lane. G'day, my name's Mike. Sorry about the fading light. I wanted to try and get out this application as quickly as I could because I can see that you're gonna get a lot and uh, the light's fading. I've just been spending three hours filling it out. I'm standing next to my dugout canoe, which I just did a 50 day solo survival expedition up the Great Barrier Reef in and I lived off the land and sea for 50 days. I'm standing outside my house, uh, my family of, well, it's actually five of us really, including the dog, but um, my wife Melinda and two kids uh, Tom and Zara, who are basically early teenagers. 
Uh, I've grown up spending a lot of time in the bush doing a lot of survival things and it really is my passion in life and that's why I'm pursuing it now as a full-time job and I would just really love the opportunity to be able to have, a, have an excuse to be honest to survive in the same place um, for such a long time and my experience from my last adventure was you really do get in tune with the landscape uh, and so to have the opportunity to stay in the one spot and just really get in tune with that one place would be would be amazing uh, and plus it would be great for, for many other parts of life um, which uh, I've outlined in my application so please do consider my application seriously um, and I really would love to be on your show thanks very much so I got back a while ago from from being on alone um, it's still under wraps as we speak uh, I think in two weeks or something it's going to be announced so that's when this video will come out because everything's quite secretive because that's just the way TV works. The, the application is quite long and I went through it you know fairly it, it took me ages to go through it actually it, it took about 12 hours straight of filling out the application um, that is because I do have quite a background in survival and filming which can actually work against you because you're more likely to fall into that trap of presenting to camera when, when you speak. But I just um, fill it out quite methodically and I think that is important because they also, they're also looking for, for commitment to what, what you're doing. So just follow the instructions and communicate as best as you can. But when it comes to doing the video, uh, like I said, just find a place that's suitable that's going to be best for your performance. So something else that might be a factor like my kids are going to be home from school in about two hours and that's kind of distracting and all that kind of stuff and whilst the light might be better and the temperature might be better it's pretty hot and sweaty at the moment um, I probably won't be in the best zone to record my video at that time so um, yeah once again just maximize what you think um, is going to make you best in your performance to camera and when you are performing to camera you, you, well you don't perform is probably what I'm tr what I what I try to do is not to perform. You're just looking at the little screen on the back of your phone. Now that can be an uncomfortable place to look, but it doesn't hurt to just stare at it for a while and get used to it. So turn your camera on, and if you're feeling like oh I'm a little bit uncomfortable, just just look at that thing till you get bored, because really it's just a little you know black dot on the back of an iPhone screen or you know what you, whatever kind of phone you got. Just get to the point where you're so bored of looking at it that you're like, oh, what's coming up next? And then just speak to the camera. Don't worry too much about, you know, audio quality, video quality, all that kind of gear, it doesn't matter. If, if you can use common sense, that's really helpful, but um, it's not what you're trying to do. They will teach you all those things whilst you do boot camp. Um, yeah, they would rather a diamond, they would, they would rather someone just be themselves so they can decide. So if you have a background like me, which is uh, I do film stuff and I do stuff about survival and that can work against you in that you try to produce like a trailer of yourself, a trailer of your abilities and things. And that requires a lot of forethought and planning and, you know, all oh, I duck this shot, you know, you'll start assessing how good your, um, your material is based on the technicalities of how well you filmed it. So yeah, just don't get wrapped up in that. So when they're looking at you doing your introduction video and they're looking at your material, they're not looking at your editing skills. They don't, they don't, they're going to be doing the editing and you're probably not going to be as good at them at it anyway. So really it's just how genuine are you at your bush stuff. So for me, I just went out and picked some okay examples of the kinds of things that I do. I had a fair old back catalogue of survival stuff anyway, but there's nothing wrong with just going out and um, carving something and um, not thinking about it too hard and just showing what skills you've got without worrying about the, the technicalities of how it might look on camera. When you're doing the selection process and you know hopefully you get through the stage and you get to like an interview stage, um, whether it's at that stage or just what they see on camera, they're just trying to figure out who you are and a real mistake it's not a mistake, it's, it's kind of ingrained into us. We, we naturally try to be somebody else. Um, and we think, oh, the kind of person they'd want to see on a loan would be, you know, for me, because I'm a, I'm a bloke, you know, would be some, maybe some big tough survival guy or whatever, you know, I can, I can you know, almost be like that last guy that was on that American show and I can, I can fit into that mould. That's not what they're wanting to see. They just want to see who you are. Because once you get through 
um, you know, a fair bit of time out in the bush, you will forget that side of you, that, that kind of walled side of you, and you will start to become more who you really are. And that's part of the cool thing about going alone is because you have an experience long enough in one place in this fairly unique, stressful situation where you get to find out more about yourself. So they're trying to assess who you are purely on who you are, not who you're unknowingly trying to be when you speak to camera. So, you know, be humble, <laughs> be shy. You know, it's not, I, I don't think that they're after type A personalities. They are just after, in fact, it, you know, they're just after people who are people and they just want to judge you on who you are. And if, if you put walls up or try to be a certain way or, you know, try to be somebody else, they won't be able to see who you are. It's not that they won't like you, and everybody does it, but it's just harder for them to judge who you are. So they just want to see through all of the things that society places into you that prevents you from being who you are, and they just want to see that person, and then they can go, right, is that the kind of person that we think would be good? And, you know, like they're not all going to have the same, the same kind of person. Like, it's not all going to be the same sex, age group, whatever. They want a big variety. And so um, you just got to be the... I was gonna say be the best at who you are. Don't even be that, just be who you are. And that, that to me, is gonna maximize the chance that you're gonna get selected because they'll see who you are. And they'll, because if you don't, they'll be, able to, they'll be able to tell if you're trying to be somebody else. And if they, all they see is someone trying to be somebody else, they won't be able to assess who you are. All right, probably bashed on about that enough. So when you are applying, this is one of the, the pitfalls that I, kind of fell into without realising it completely innocently. Because I have a survival background, every man and his, lots of people and friends and people that follow me are sending me things, oh dude, you need, you need to apply for this and all that kind of thing. And you end up telling all these people that you're applying. And then when you do get in, I didn't, didn't realise at the time, but you can't actually tell anybody. It's quite a secretive thing. And if you've let all these people know that you're applying, that's okay. But then it makes it awkward when they start going, hey, how'd your application go? And you can't give them an answer. And it's, it's actually a bit of a stressful thing about being on the show because I've actually avoided friends and stuff um, as I wait until it can be announced that I'm actually on the show because I don't want to lie to them. And when they're like, hey, what you been up to? You know, you seem to, have, where were you for the last few months? You know, <laughs> um, I don't want to have to lie to them. So I've actually been avoiding people. So the less people you tell that you're applying, the better. The less questions you're going to get, the easier it can be just to be like, oh, they're just less likely to ask. Uh, so that's something that um, I didn't realise um, until uh, after I'd actually got in and then it was like, hey, you can't tell anybody. I was like, oh, oh okay. Um, I wish I hadn't told so many people I was applying. Um, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much the bulk of what I've got to say. I mean, good luck with it. You've, it's a really good opportunity to take. Uh, I'd, I'd certainly recommend doing it, um, it, other than just the cool survival experience, uh, you get to learn a lot about uh, filming and all that kind of stuff. And I, I had a fair bit of practice at it, but I did, you're just learning from other people and they're really practiced professionals um, who've all really made it in the industry. You're gonna meet a whole bunch of other cool people uh, who you've, you know, all different walks of life. And you, know, you only live once and, you know, why would you not wanna do that? So uh, yeah, I'm certainly glad that I did it and I'm um, very much looking forward to seeing it when it comes out. And um, yeah, in a, literally a week or two, it's gonna hit the streets that uh, I'm actually on it. And um, I'll probably update you uh, through that process as it goes. Um, I'm also gonna put up a bunch of videos about my preparation, because as soon as I even thought I was gonna go on it, I started filming my preparation for it. I would've killed it. Um, and then different stages of the preparation when I found out what kind of environment it might be and right up to heading off out um, into the yonder and also what my 10 items were and the other clothing uh, and equipment that I took as well. So I hope that's been useful. Uh, I hope I've given you something um, to, that may encourage you to adjust the way you make your video that's gonna make um, you shine through as who you are and not trying to be anybody else. Thanks very much.